Welcome. Welcome to Arlena's Kitchen, 12-24-2021. This was my December dinner with the Lord. So here I am preparing. And in this video, you will be seeing me making my coconut tart and my sweet potato pudding. So there's my coconut already grated. That's a close up of it. I think I did, yeah, just one coconut cause yeah. And it took everything out of me just to get that one coconut done in here. See, I even forgot a piece of coconut that I did not grate. So here's my coconut in the pot and I'm adding my water cause what I'm doing is I'm preparing it and getting it ready to be stewed down. Like we would say back home. I'm adding some cane sugar. So now I'm just incorporating the sugar into the coconut and water. And all you need is, I mean, a very little bit of water because the sugar will help to release the extra water from the grated coconut. So this is a much different view. Now I have incorporated the sugar. So now I'm getting ready to add my spices. I'm adding various spices. And this is what we would call, we're getting ready to stew down. We call it like the meat. So I'm getting ready to slowly simmer it down. So the coconut will be infused with all the herbs, well actually all the spices. So there is my coconut meat mixture after like about maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So now this is the leftover from the coconut that I couldn't grate no further. So I'm getting ready to make some coconut milk. So I'm gonna use that to make coconut milk, fresh homemade coconut milk, so I can use for my peas and rice for the following day to cook my peas and rice and of course the oxtail. So I'm just gonna blend it. So now I'm getting ready to strain it, strain off the milk. The liquid is what we're gonna use to make the peas and rice, which would be done the following day. And that will be featured in another video. And actually now I am taking the trash and I'm gonna put it up because I'm gonna use it to make coconut drop. That's like a type of cookie that we make back home in the Caribbean, or at least in St. Martin. So there is my coconut stewing down. And that's been like maybe about, maybe 20, 25 minutes. And that's what it looks like. So now I'm getting ready to prepare to make the dough. So I'm adding some sugar to a stick of butter. And of course I am mixing it with my hand mixer. It's going to be quite a bit of mixing. There I'm adding my egg or eggs. So I'm going to mix it up. Yep. So I'm going to incorporate the egg into the sugar and butter mixture. Okay, so I'm just scraping it down with my spatula. Trying to get everything down into the bowl. So now I'm adding my vanilla essence as well. I'm also gonna be adding my almond essence. You could do either or, or you can do both. So I am mixing it in once again by hand using my hand mixer I mean sorry mm -hmm. 
So now I'm adding my evaporated milk and yeah, we don't measure anything. We just throw and go. So I am incorporating my milk into the butter and sugar mixture. And now I'm using my hand mixer so that we can get it all smooth and uniform looking. So now I'm adding my flour so that we can bring in the dough like we would say back home, bring it in, bring it in. So I'm basically just folding in the flour until I get it into a, a stiff or a firm ball that I can at least mold it. Okay, so now I'm adding it to some wax paper because I got to try to, like we would say, bring it in. So I'm kind of using my hands and, you know, kind of just holding it over. Probably got to, I'm trying to get it smooth. Now I learned to make tart from some of the, the older heads. Well, actually a lady who taught me how to do the, the dough. I could always do the coconut, but I always had a problem with the dough. And I was so tired. And actually I put a little too much baking powder in the dough. I was so tired. Instead of using teaspoon, I used tablespoon, but yeah, that's okay. So here the dough is nice and smooth as you can see. So now I am cutting it in two to section it off for top and bottom and I'm going to roll it and then I'm going to place them into some sandwich bags. So there they are in the sandwich bag. So I'm putting them in a bowl and then I'm going to refrigerate them overnight so they can firm up when I'm ready to use them the following day. So time for us to start working on our Caribbean sweet potato pudding or pone. So I went ahead and already grated all my stuff that I'm gonna need for my sweet potato pudding. So I'm kind of like incorporating my sweet potato and my pumpkin and all that. So now I'm adding my brown sugar and we don't measure anything. We just, you know, taste and go. At this point, when you've been doing it for so many years, yeah, it comes, it comes naturally. Now my grandmother was one of the best, um, sweet potato makers back home in St. Martin. And I've seen her do it for many years. So she never taught me, but I would see her doing it. So I learned to do it just by watching. So now I'm adding some flour because we got to put some flour in it to kind of like hold it together a little bit to stiffen it up like we would say back home. Stiffen it up to hold it together. So now I'm adding some vanilla. And one thing you want your pudding, your pudding has to be well seasoned up, like we said back home. Everything we do, it got to be well tasty. So you want to make sure you have enough herbs and spices and sweetness. You know, you got to be able when you're biting it to taste every little bit of spice you put in there. So we like to really flavor our foods, you know. We use lots of herbs and spices in our cooking and in our baking. Okay, adding my spices still. And here I'm adding my black pepper. We put black pepper in our sweet potato pudding in St. Martin. Jamaica sweet potato pudding is made different than our sweet potato pudding. And one thing I like in my sweet potato pudding, I like a lot of black pepper. I gotta taste that ting. I like that, you know, that, that tingling. Kind of like in my mouth when you take a bite of the sweet potato pone or pudding. 
And nothing like when you use a good black pepper. Oh, yes. Your, your sweet potato pudding got to taste right. So here I am, I'm adding, I added some oil. So you use some healthy oil because it needs to be moist. You don't want no dry, like we said back home, no dry pudding, no tasteless pudding. Because <laughs> boy, you hand anybody a piece of that and tea tasting right, let me tell you, you'll be the dark of the tongue and not in a good way. So yeah, my pudding is ready for the pan. Normally what they would do back home back in the days, the way my grandmother used to do it, you know, she would bake a sample first and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I had no time to bake no sample. And I've been making it long enough now. It's been years, so... I know my pudding was fine and indeed it was so there I'm adding it to my lined baking pan because I didn't want to you know wash anything when it was done just toss and go so that's why I added the foil paper I had enough work as you know as it already was didn't want to add any more so here I'm smoothing the top out. So here it is, oven ready. And now I'm getting ready to put it in the oven. And there she goes. And I'm just gonna let it bake. So while that's in the oven baking, we're gonna get back to working on our coconut tart. Now this is the following day, actually, that I'm working on the coconut tart. Is it the following day? No, it's not. I'm sorry. Lord Jesus. No, it's not. The dough has been sitting in the refrigerator for about a couple of hours. So now I'm rolling out the dough, getting it ready to put into my, my pie plate. So yeah, I'm just going to fix it up nicely in the plate. So it look nice and presentable. <laughs> so now I'm adding my meat, my stew coconut. And then I'm just going to smooth it around, you know, like fix it nicely into the into the shell or into the cross or the dough like we said back home. So now I'm working on the top part of the coconut tart, which is the dressing. We call this like the dressing, the designing, you know, the you know, kind of the lace part of the, of the coconut tart. So I'm using a pizza cutter to you know make my lattice strips I was so tired I couldn't even cut those straight <laughs> so here's my coconut tart dressed and ready for the oven basically so there it is so I'm just you know trying to make it look a little more presentable before finally putting it into the oven so there it is and there I am. I'm getting ready to put it right in the oven. There she goes as well, along with the pudding. This is something I enjoy doing once a year. It brings back a lot of great memories. So now it's time to take them out of the oven. Let's see what they look like. And there she goes. That's my sweet potato pudding, my Caribbean sweet potato pudding. It tasted good. It lasted three days. I make it twice a year because it's dangerous. That's a close up of it right there. And then that's the coconut tart. See, I put a little too much baking powder. I was really tired, but that's okay. It tasted good though. It really tasted good. I enjoyed myself. I was really thankful. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.